screen, there's just a couple of things to, to cover. Um, in the Q&A pod, you can enter your questions, uh, just type them in, and we will address questions at the end of today's presentation as time permits. Um, so hopefully you can see the, the two comments about the audio, and um, please type your questions here. In the Files pod, you can click uh, the file that's there that is a PDF copy of today's presentation slides. You can download those directly to your computers. And last and not least, in the Notes pod is a link uh, to an online survey. We do appreciate your input and feedback and welcome your participation in that survey uh, regarding today's presentation. That helps us uh, continue, continually improve our, our webinar presentations, um, know what we're doing right and what you'd like to see in other presentations in the future. So with that little bit of housekeeping, um, I think we're about ready to get started. Uh, doing today's introduction is Dr. Patricia Boffier. Patricia is the Director of the Office of Materials and Chemical Technologies within DOE Office of Nuclear Energy. She is also the Chair of the GIF Education and Training Task Force. Patricia? Yes. Good morning, everybody. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Alfredo Vassile this morning from the Commissaria on Energy Atomique et aux Energy Alternative. He obtained his Master in Physics at the Balsevo Institute in Argentina and his Doctor of Nuclear Engineering degree at the Grenoble University in France in 1977. He joined CEA in 1981, working at Rhapsody Sodium Cooled Experimental Fast Reactor at Cadarache. He held laboratory head positions on core physics and safety studies, both for light water reactors and fast reactors. Dr. Vassile participated at the Gen 4 roadmap definition process as a member of the Light Water Reactors Technical Group and was the French representative of the INPRO Steering Technical Committee for the joint study on closed nuclear fuel cycle with fast reactors. He is presently the project manager of the ESNII Plus European project on fast reactors, the French representative at the IAEA Technical Working Group on fast reactor the GIF GFR Steering Committee, the GIF GFR Conceptual Design and Safety, and the GIF SFR Safety and Operation Project Management Board. He is the CEA representative for the Allegro GFR Experimental Reactor Project. So it's a very a great pleasure to have you, Alfredo, with us. And without any delay, I give you the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much for this introduction and to, for giving me the opportunity to speak about the uh, gas cooled fast reactors. Um, I tried to change. Yes. So my, the outline of my presentation, we first go through the uh, uh, motivation for the development of uh, gas cooled fast reactors. And then uh, let's uh, go uh, to the past to have an uh, historical uh, perspective of what was done in the past in different countries to uh, come back to the present projects that are being developed in the framework of Generation 4. Um, we will focus then on the performance requirements for this uh, type of uh, systems and the R&D needed to, to such uh, developments knowing that the specific challenges for these uh, systems are the, uh, focused on the, on the core and fuel, uh, the decay heat removal issues, and, and, and the materials. So then we will uh, move to the uh, conclusions. Um, the so what is the, the, the rationale for, the, uh, for having a gas cool fast reactors. First of all, GFRs are, are fast reactors, that means uh, closed fuel cycle, uh, and, and we know that they, they are needed for the sustainability of nuclear power. That means by closing the fuel cycle, we uh, use uh, more efficiently the, the fuel, the natural resources, the, fish, the, the fissionable natural resources. And on the, on the other hand, 
we have the possibility to reduce the volumes and radiotoxicity of high-level uh, nuclear waste through the transmutation that is possible uh, in, in this kind of, of reactors. Uh, Gas-cooled fast reactors have some favorable features linked uh, first uh, to, the, to the coolant. Uh, helium is chemically inert. It's a very stable nucleus. It's, uh, the, the void coefficient uh, for the uh, helium uh, cooled uh, fast reactors is, is uh, small, but still positive. You know, in, in uh, lead or uh, especially in, in sodium cooled fast reactors, it is, this is, a, is an issue. For the uh, single phase coolant, uh, eliminated is boiling. There is no uh, difficulty with, with, with boiling due to the fact that it's. it's, it's uh, um, gaseous uh, system. Uh, uh, helium is optically transparent. That is, is a positive for, for the uh, operator and for the inspection, service, uh, repair, and, and, and operating the of the reactor. And uh, last uh, and very important thing is that the uh, helium uh, cooled or gas cooled fast reactors in general allows high temperatures in this means uh, increased thermal efficiency for economic uh, uh, benefits and allows uh, industrial uh, applications of such uh, high uh, temperatures. Um, I have some delay on the change of the slides. Sorry for that. Um, but. Uh, gas cooled fast reactors have some drawbacks that uh, are needed to be uh, addressed. Uh, typically, uh, gaseous coolants have a small thermal inertia. That means that uh, the, we have a, a fast uh, heat up of the core in case of uh, loss of uh, forced cooling. Uh, and, and we need uh, to have a pressurized systems, even at normal operation. So it's uh, roughly in the range of uh, 7 uh, megapascal. And uh, the low thermal inertia of the core uh, makes difficult the, the uh, decay heat removal. Uh, of course, we uh, related to the uh, HDR uh, reactors, like uh, high temperature reactors, which have a uh, huge amount of, of uh, uh, graphite in the core that uh, increases their thermal inertia. This is not the case for GFR. It's not possible to use such graphite for thermalization of the, of the neutrons. So the motivation for the development of these kind of reactors is to fold this, uh, to enhance, enhance safety and to improve the, the performance uh, of, the, of the reactor. Um, let's go to, to have a look on the past uh, projects. I, I want to say uh, that uh, there were a, a lot of uh, several projects in the past in different countries and international cooperations, but uh, they never, um, never a reactor was, was built. That means there is no operating experience on, on gas-cooled fast reactors in the world for the moment. Uh, uh, let's start with the uh, U.S. Uh, General Atomics project on the GCFR program. It was started in the 1960s. It was uh, uh, using uh, the, 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 the technology of, the, of H HDR that was um, uh, uh, known at that time, and on the Pitch Bottom and uh, Fort Sandran in particular. It, this is a program that was founded by the U.S. DOE with uh, some collaboration with European partners. Um, at that time, the, the design uh, had a, 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 a was based on a multi-cavity pressurized concrete pressure vessel. We will see later why this uh, concrete uh, uh, pressure vessel is, is needed and uh, using a vented fuel pin uh, to a uh, low uh, high, high burn up. So the um, um, general picture of uh, these uh, reactors is on the next slide, this one. 
um, you see the, the core of the reactor, the main components, uh, steam generators uh, inside the, 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 main, the main vessel, and surrounded by, uh, a, surrounded by a, a press pressed concrete uh, vessel to uh, avoid uh, strong depressurization in case of uh, loss of coolant accidents. Um, on the next slide, we uh, see the um, Germany uh, gas uh, breather memorandum in the frame of this uh, memorandum uh, from 1969. Two uh, German centers were involved in on the, uh, such research, uh, was Karlsruhe and Jülich, with some industrial partners, right, based on basically uh, based on uh, different uh, three concepts were developed at that time with uh, helium as, as coolant. The uh, fuel assemblies were uh, used uh, as the same type of the sodium cooled fast reactor that were developed in, in Germany at that time in, in, in parallel. So again, a press pressed concrete pressure vessel were used and the steam cycle uh, to uh, coupled with the primary circuit. Some work was carried out on, on coated particle fuel and direct cycle power factors to increase the uh, efficiency. Um, another uh, European project was uh, the Gas Breeder Reactor Association in 19, from 1970 to 1981. So some uh, European organization joined this uh, association, and they developed four uh, different concepts, uh, GBR 1 to 4. Uh, the range of power was around 1,000 megawatt electrical, uh, helium cooled, and uh, CO2 cooled. Uh, the last one uh, used uh, metallic plug uh, fuel pins in its spacer grids. And the, uh, some improvements were made at that time on the design of the fuel for increase the uh, heat exchanges by the uh, rivet surfaces on the, on, on the cladding. Um, in the, uh, you can see in the next picture some uh, design uh, of the GBR2, GBR3. Uh, this is the, the, the fuel of uh, the different uh, reactors with the uh, helium, uh, you, you see the pin uh, bundles here, and the uh, general layout of GBR4, uh, when again we have the, the core in the center and the main components uh, like uh, heat exchangers and, uh, and blowers. Uh, surrounded by a uh, cavity uh, to keep the pressure as high as possible in case of uh, depressurization due to a local loss of uh, coolant uh, accident. Uh, on the next slide, um, the um, UK ETGBR, EGCR, in the, from 1970 to uh, 1990, uh, this was based on the UK advanced gas cooled thermal uh, spectrum, neutron spectrum reactor architecture. Uh, used a metallic clad fuel, carbon dioxide coolant, CO2, and again a pre stressed concrete pr a pressure vessel around the uh, main, main, the main vessel. Um, the, um, finally, the, on, the, on the next slide, we, we see see uh, some uh, uh, picture of the uh, fuel developed by the uh, Japanese uh, from the 60s to 2010, uh, a block type uh, fuel uh, containing uh, coated particles were uh, studied in a solid matrix of uh, silicon, silicon carbide. And the fuel, this fuel was very close to the, the, the fuel used for the GBR2 uh, European uh, project uh, previously uh, presented. Um, then um, let's move to the next one, um, which is about the uh, present situation. You know, in the in the generation four. Uh, initiative uh, that uh, identifies a, a renewal of interest in fast reactors for, for sustainability, waste minimization, and non-electricity applications. Uh, 
six uh, systems uh, were selected, uh, and uh, three of them uh, were of fast, fast reactors, with a, a fourth one, which is the molten salt, which has a, a, can have the option for a fast spectrum uh, reactor. So if you we look at the um, at the different uh, system selected by the, the generation four uh, on the next, um, you you see that for the GFR here, gas cooled fast reactor. Uh, the uh, um, partners involved in the development of these systems are France, uh, uh, Japan, and uh, the uh, Eur Euratom. And uh, U.S. is associated to these uh, developments, uh, has an observer for the moment, uh, through their participation to the uh, conceptual design and uh, safety project uh, with uh, a contribution from uh, General Atomics uh, around the uh, EM Square project we will see uh, later. On the next slide, The uh, main characteristics of uh, such a, a reactor has taken as a reference for the for the on GIF is uh, 600 megawatt thermal, 48% uh, net efficiency. Uh, the range of temperature you see is uh, 850 degrees out the temperature. That this is uh, uh, what is an, a, a very interesting. Uh, Characteristic for for high efficiency and other applications of, of heat. Uh, nine megapascal is the, is the pressure in the prima in, in the circuit, and the average uh, power density is 100 megawatt thermal per cubic meter and in the core. Uh, this must be compared, uh, for example, with the HTR typically HTR typically typical uh, values of in the range of five to ten, let's say. But Mr. More than 10 times higher. Uh, this is why uh, we will see later that this, uh, the decay heat removal in accidental conditions is, is a challenging, challenging uh, aspect. Compared to uh, sodium, uh, let's say that this is, is lower values because sodium is in the range of 200 to uh, 300 uh, megawatts per uh, cubic meter. The reference fuel and this is uh, a, a, a very characteristic of this type, type of reactors, is uranium plutonium carbide with a cladding of silicon carbide. We will see later how is the uh, aspect of this, of, the, of this fuel. This is, of course, a ceramic fuel, refractory fuel, high temperature uh, resistance. Um, uh, the uh, burn-ups, uh, the conversion ratio is self-sufficient. I mean, we don't uh, target in the breeding in this kind of reactors. And the burn-up is 5% uh, fission at initial metal atoms and 60 dPa, 60 de deplacement per, per atoms. On the next slide. Um, Alfredo, can you um, yeah. speak a little louder, please? Oh, yeah. Now it's better now? Thank you. OK. Um, the, um, of course, this, this uh, system is a high temperature, inert coolant, and uh, of course, it's a fast neutrons for closed fuel salt, as we already mentioned. Uh, for the sustainability purposes of, of Gen 4 uh, uh, options, high temperature and uh, non-electrical applications uh, for, for other uh, industrial applications. Um, the, the helium uh, he allows uh, no, um, a, a very interesting coolant for, for avoid a material corrosion on, on, on the structures. Um, but uh, the requires the uh, development of uh, very advanced materials and, and fuels. So they, they key technical focus for the development of such uh, reactors is the uh, carbide, uh, silicon carbide uh, cladding uh, fuel, 
uh, the high temperature components and materials and decay heat removal in, in accidental conditions. These are the uh, challenging uh, issues that must be faced by, for the development of these reactors. On the next uh, slide, we see the general layout of uh, a 2,400 megawatt uh, thermal and the indirect cycle, the GFR, was developed in, at CEA uh, last year. And uh, we see again in this reactor the main components here, the primary vessel and heat exchangers and uh, uh, blowers. Uh, in this, uh, here we see the, the heat removal loops that are surrounded by a guard vessel. Uh, in this case, it's not concrete, but it is metallic guard vessel. Again, to have uh, a backup pressure in case of depressurization of the primary circuit as high as possible to uh, operate in natural convection and to remove the decay heat. On the next slide, we see the uh, performance requirements uh, that are the, uh, for, the, for the design of these of these reactors, as I mentioned, self generation of plutonium in the core, uh, no fertile blanket to to limit uh, proliferation risk, uh, limit the uh, mass of plutonium involved in the in the core or loaded in the core to facilitate the industrial deployment of a fleet uh, in case of uh, of course this this parameter is strongly linked to the uh, speed and what we need to deploy such reactors in the future uh, in the industrial base. Um, the ability to transmute long-life nuclear waste resulting from spent fuel recycle uh, without lowering the overall performance of the system. Um, we, we need to approve the favorable economics owing to a high thermal e efficiency and diverse non-electricity issues, high, high quality heat. So the, 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 the proposed safety architecture uh, must fit with the objectives considering that the control of reactivity by limiting the reactivity swing over the operating cycle. Uh, this, uh, in, in case of some uh, specific transients like the control road withdrawal, is uh, strongly linked to the uh, uh, reactivity swing during the cycle because the control roads are not uh, insert in the core so much. Uh, we, we need to design cores with a reduced cool and void reactivity that this is easier for helium than for the for sodium, for example. Um, and we need to, uh, to have the capacity uh, of, the of the system to cool uh, the core in all postulated situations, provision of different systems, redundancy and diversification uh, to uh, face the uh, drawbacks of, of this uh, concept uh, linked to the low thermal inertia. And uh, a refractory fuel element is uh, capable of withstanding very high temperatures, robustness of the first barrier, and confinement of radioactive materials. Uh, on the next slide, we uh, see the challenge linked to the core and fuel. The, the, the greatest challenge, of course, is the development of a robust high temperature, high power density refractory fuels and core structural materials. Um, must be uh, capable of, of withstanding the in-core thermal, mechanical, and radiation environment. And safety and economic consideration demand a low core pressure drop, which favors high coolant uh, volume fractions. Uh, this is in particular to uh, um, this point uh, linked to the uh, ability of the core to operate on the natural convection in accidental conditions. We need to reduce such uh, pressure loss uh, in, in the core uh, for low uh, flow regimes. And uh, again, related to the specifications we mentioned before, the minimization of the plutonium inventory leads to a demand on high fissile material volume fraction. So these two lead to these requirements are some what uh, contradictory, so we need to make a compromise in between to uh, answer the two uh, requirements. Um, the candidates that were considered for this uh, 
fuels uh, were uh, include carbides, nitrides, as well as oxide. But today, the reference uh, fuel is uh, on carbide. And the preferred cladding materials are the silicon uh, carbide and silicon carbide fibers. In the next uh, slide, we, we can uh, um, go back to the uh, materials and components and helium technology challenges. Some um, characteristics of the systems, um, um, I said the, we, we have a high temperatures, corrosion resistant, we need uh, corrosion resistant materials uh, on the cooling circuit, uh, heat exchanger, insulation, ceilings, and a relatively high pressure in primary circuit related to highly efficient circulators. This, uh, of course, uh, to uh, avoid uh, high uh, power uh, uh, on, the, on the blowers, on the circulators, uh, we need to increase the helium density and to, uh, to have a high uh, pressure in, in the primary circuit. Uh, the uh, design of the core uh, must take into account the uh, issues we already mentioned related to the lack of inertia uh, and the high power density. Um, we will face uh, relatively high temperature non-uniformities along the fuel roads due to the specific configuration and the, the, the transfer coefficient on, on the helium. Uh, we uh, will face, of course, uh, the difficulties related to the decay heat removal uh, in LOCA and uh, the uh, lack of uh, uh, electrical uh, sources. So, so high coolant velocity in the core may can uh, produce some vibrations, uh, several meters per second, and it must be uh, considered also in the design of the core. And uh, finally, some uh, helium-related technologies uh, from, uh, from the system linked to the, um, the leakage, uh, the ceilings, uh, the helium recycling, if uh, possible, and the helium chemistry uh, control. On the next slide, the uh, a view of, of a typical fuel, we have here a core, uh, which uh, have two uh, zones here, uh, the internal zone with a lower plutonium uh, content and the external zone with a uh, higher plutonium content to have a profile of power uh, as uh, flat as, as possible, and the, the control roads. And we have see a fuel assembly. And what I will I wanted to see show you is this uh, design of the of the pin. We, we see the carbide fuel, uranium plutonium uh, carbide in the center in red, and uh, surrounded by a cladding on silicon carbide and silicon carbide fibers uh, to increase the uh, mechanical resistance, and for the tightness of such a pin, uh, we need to add some liner in between the uh, cladding and the, the pins. In this case, uh, we have a liner here of tungsten and uranium and uh, to, to, to increase the, the tightness. Um, the uh, next uh, slide is uh, devoted to the decay heat removal issue. As you know, uh, we already mentioned that for the uh, high temperature reactors can rely on the conduction uh, cold down. But this, this doesn't work for GFR. Why? We, we can see on the next uh, slide a picture we can understand very easily where we see here uh, in red the uh, volume, uh, the core of the GTMHR 600 megawatt uh, uh, elect uh, thermal uh, core surrounded by uh, the uh, graphite uh, blocks uh, that in includes, that he makes a, a big thermal inertia of the whole system compared to a much smaller core with high power density here in red in the center. This is the core of the GFR 2400 megawatt thermal. So it's clear that the um, decay heat removal will be much easier in the case of the HDL related, related to, the, to the GFR. So let's come back to the previous uh, 
uh, slide, we see that uh, for that we need to design very efficient uh, decay heat removal systems uh, allowing to operate in natural convection. So um, a convective flow, uh, of course, is needed in the core uh, at all time. When, when the transient uh, concern uh, pressurized conditions, that means no lock and no loss of coolant accident, the natural convection can be uh, efficient enough. The difficulties arrive when we have uh, local and uh, loss of uh, electrical sources. Uh, so under depressurized conditions, the challenges at the efficiency of the uh, natural convection will be lower due to the low uh, gas density. Uh, so we need uh, power requirements for the blower uh, very large at, at low pressure. And the, the, black up, the backup pressure, the guard vessel, is needed. That's why a, a, a guard vessel or, or a, co a closed containment is needed around the primary circuit to avoid a, a too uh, high uh, decrease of the, of, the, of the pressure and to keep the helium at uh, enough uh, density. Um, the, the primary circuit must be reconfigured uh, to allow decay heat uh, removal. We see in the uh, next slides, uh, uh, the next one, this one we have, uh, this is the, 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 the primary circuit in the normal operation with the, uh, the core, the primary vessel, and uh, the, the heat exchanger, the blower here, the main circulator, and this is the, the operation in normal conditions with the hot uh, helium in the center uh, going through the heat exchanger and coming back to the vessel. In accidental conditions, in decay heat removal conditions, the, op the reactor uh, must operate using this uh, decay heat removal system here. That means that the, which is connected, it's another uh, view here, the primary, uh, the decay heat removal system with a primary loop connected directly uh, with helium on the primary, on the reactor pressure vessel, a secondary loop on, on, on water, for example, and link it to the uh, water pool to remove the, the, the heat. That means that the transition from natural, um, from forced convection to natural convection in accidental conditions need the closure of this valve here, this is a check valve, and the opening of this check valve here to uh, change the, the flow path of, of helium in this case. Um, the next slide, um, we come back to the, another of the challenges of the, for the development of uh, this type of reactors is the, the materials, related to the materials. Of course, uh, the materials issue for fast reactors have some common uh, issues with other fast reactors. Uh, they link it to the high temperature, uh, high dose, uh, neutron dose, and uh, for, for, the, uh, for the gas cooled fast, fast reactors, uh, temperatures, as we see, we saw already, are a little bit higher, and uh, but the doses are also uh, relative high. So. Uh, the, 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 the design of the component for long-term aging, uh, 60 years, the, of course, the industrial feasibility, manufacturability, weldability, the environmental as, as effects, uh, impure uh, helium compatibility and oxidation, fatigue, fatigue crack, long and very high temperature, including accidental conditions, must be taken into account. The tensile and very long-term creep and creep rupture properties of the of the plate, forging, weldments, and heat-affected zone of this class of materials in the operating high temperatures and uh, high temperature bolting. So the, the candidate materials today for the pressure vessel, which we are sum, summarizing here, but the reference material is 316 LN uh, stainless steel. Um, on the next. Uh, slide, we, we see that the uh, requirements of, uh, for the components mainly, uh, high thermomechanical uh, resistance with uh, high temperatures, uh, good uh, mechanical properties uh, for such uh, extreme environments, and again, industrial feasibility, 
Uh, the intermediate heat exchanger, this is very uh, important uh, component. We not need to have, have a, a high efficiency, 95%, and low pressure drop, no leakage, easy to inspect. Uh, the thermal insulation, the sealing materials uh, are been, uh, is need to, to develop uh, to isolate the hot to the cold uh, parts of the different circuits with different candidate materials we are seeing, we can see here uh, for the such, uh, for such, such uh, isolation materials. Um, finally, um, if we move to the next, uh, we, we I want to, to recall some uh, main uh, programs, international programs in the European uh, framework. Where we have the uh, the GPNM uh, nuclear materials uh, joint uh, network, joint pr uh, platform. Uh, it's uh, working on regulatory and codification requirements, uh, development of codes, norms, and methods. Uh, also uh, component design, testing and fabrication issues, irradiation damage uh, on different uh, materials for different uh, components, uh, addressing also corrosion, oxidation, erosion resistance of select, uh, such selected materials for long-term exposure tests, uh, thermal aging, thermal shock degradation of fuel, design and modeling work is being uh, carried out also on using mechanical properties, and the materials qualification and, and development on ferric mass sensitive steel, high temperature materials, nickel alloys, and, and, and ceramics. So not, now I want to uh, go to the uh, main uh, projects uh, that have been developed today. Uh, one is the Allegro project, which is um, one of the three uh, uh, fast reactor uh, uh, supported by the European Sustainable Nuclear Industrial Initiative, uh, Allegro, Astrid for uh, sodium and Alfred for the lead cool fast reactor. Allegro is an is a, is a, is a experimental reactor that has been developed in the framework of the consortium of uh, V4G4, Visegrad, four countries, uh, Generation 4. Uh, including uh, Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland, and Slovakia, and associated uh, with uh, with France as associated member of of, of this uh, consortium. The reference uh, is uh, to uh, build the reactor in in, in Slovakia. Um, on next slide, some uh, main features of, of of Allegro. We can see here the main vessel. Uh, the decay heat, the three decay heat removal systems, and two main uh, primary loops, um, with an additional uh, loop to test high temperature components. Um, the uh, main circuits on the on the next slide, the main circuits of uh, the main sorry the the, the objective of, of the reactor. Is, uh, is a demonstration of key GFR technologies, the, the core behavior and control, uh, the development of ceramic fuels. I will, will show you some uh, description of the, of the core to such development, uh, the development of helium circuits and components and the related technologies uh, to address the, the issue of the decay heat removal. Uh, uh, Allegro will have a uh, fast neutron uh, irradiation uh, capacity, and uh, the potential, as I already showed, that uh, for coupling with high temperature components on direct, for direct use of, of heat, and uh, a, a, the development of safety standards for GFR, which doesn't exist uh, today. Uh, on the next slide, we see the main characteristics of the reactor, which is 75 megawatt thermal, no electricity production, um, primary uh, helium uh, in the range of temperatures uh, with uh, outlet temperatures 530, roughly, and uh, 7 megapascal, 70 bars uh, pressurized primary circuit with two uh, secondary pressurized water loops, um, with an uh, option for an additional high temperature gas loop, as I showed here. Um, the secondary loops, uh, we are looking at the possibility to have also other 
possibilities uh, than water that can be an, an another 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 gas uh, a mixture of gases in, in these secondary loops and the tertiary is the atmospheric air with uh, uh, water uh, air heat exchangers so we have three decay heat removal loops uh, represented uh, here and again uh, all these primary components are uh, included in a guard vessel here that uh, can uh, allow to uh, improve the the behavior in case of depressurization of the primary of the primary cycle. In addition to this decay heat removal system, we have for the uh, for the reference design today um, a, press, a, a, a safety injection system uh, to uh, have an, a safety injection of a heavy a gas in case of of, of low gas. So on the next slide. Uh, we have a picture of the of the core. It's uh, roughly uh, 80 subassemblies here in 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 yellow. That uh, the reference is the mock subassemblies uh, for the first cores, uh, and and uh, we have uh, six positions here in 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 red for the uh, irradiation of experimental uh, ceramic uh, subassemblies. Uh, for the development of the reference uh, fuels for GFRs. Uh, presently, we are looking at the possibility of using uh, not a MOX fuel, but uh, uranium enriched fuel with uh, enrichment lower than 20%, uh, because it's not really needed to have a plutonium loading in the first course to the development of the reference uh, GFR fuels. So this is the range of temperature that we see that when the Allegro core will be uh, loaded with uh, ceramic fuels, we will be able to rise the outer temperature of the helium uh, on the core up to uh, 850 uh, degrees. Uh, and this is a picture of the standard uh, fuel. Um, Concerning the reactivity control, the, the reactor, the core has six control uh, shutdown devices and four diverse shutdown uh, devices. Had each control load and shutdown device is individually uh, driven. A particular uh, characteristic of, the, of the, these type of reactors is that the control rods are inserted on the bottom of the, of the, of the, of the, from the bottom of the, of the reactor vessel. So on the next uh, slide, um, we uh, again we, we see the the principles for the decay heat removal system. We we, s we have the same primary uh, and the uh, main uh, decay heat removal system connected to to, to a pool with three uh, different decay heat removal uh, loops, and uh, of course they are uh, situated above the core to facilitate the natural uh, helium uh, circulation. And the decay heat removal machines can operate in forces and natural circulation for, for if the, the decay heat removal blowers are not uh, are available. Um, on the next slide, some words about the uh, an, another uh, project uh, of uh, GFR today by uh, General Atomics uh, is the EM square. That means the energy multiply module, which is uh, a reactor that. Uh, combines the advanced fuel and cladding to, to, to be really revolutionary instead of incremental uh, advanced related to present reactors. Uh, another uh, main characteristic of these reactors is that it's being designed to have a long life cycle, a fuel cycle, that means 20 years life. Uh, that's why it is needed to design a vented fuel that means to remove the fission, gaseous fission prior before the fuel pins during the operation. So uh, the higher uh, temperatures also, uh, has all of GFRs allows uh, process for heat applications and increased uh, thermal efficiency for economic aspects. So the, the, the components take advantage of the, the advanced materials, uh, again, silicon uh, carbide, silicon carbide cladding, high uranium bearing f uh, fuels, even if other options for the, for the fuel are being considered uh, at the same time by, by general atomics. 
Um, on the next slide, we, we see a, sh a view of the of the core of e EM Square, which you see here the, the fuel in the center, and so the, the control systems around the, the core, and a, a tree bundle assembly with a, a typical hexagonal configuration with 91 rods per, uh, per bundle, and the, 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 the fuel pin here, uranium carbide fuel pin with a central hole uh, pellet in silicon uh, carbide uh, cladding. So um, now we can uh, move to the uh, general conclusions of what we see today, today that the GFR concept is attractive as it avoids the coolant related issues associated with liquid metal coolant fast reactors. Uh, helium is a chemical uh, inert, it's an excellent nuclear stability no activation, uh, it's a coolant is, that is transparent, that is uh, easy to uh, for the inspection and, and repair and operation, fuel handling and so on, uh, and uh, have, uh, offers a high temperature heat source uh, possibilities for high efficiency electricity generation and high quality uh, process heat. But of course, we, has, we, we, we mentioned the, the main technical challenges of this uh, type of reactors are uh, linked to the uh, high temperature and uh, high power density. Uh, so we need to develop uh, high uh, resistance uh, fuels and uh, robust decay heat removal systems and the materials associated to, to, the, to the design of the, of the reactors. So thank you very much for your attention, and uh, I am trying to answer your, your questions now. Thank you, uh, Dr. Facilli. Uh, you have a Q&A pod where you can type in your questions for um, today's presenter, and while you're doing that and those are coming in, let's just take a look at the upcoming webinar presentations uh, as part of the Gen 4 International Forum. On the 28th of March, there will be a presentation uh, by Dr. Lawrence Lung from uh, CNL of Canada on supercritical water reactors. In April, there will be a presentation on molten salt reactors uh, by Dr. Alyssa Merrill with uh, France. And in May, fluoride cooled high temperature reactors by Professor uh, Per Peterson uh, from UC Berkeley in the United States. We appreciate everyone's attendance. And then thank you again, uh, Alfredo, um, for joining us from France this morning. Um, I'm looking to see if I see questions. Okay, so Alfredo, in the Q&A pod, there are two tabs. So there is a question. Um, well, Rogers just made a notation of the of the way um, things are expressed on your slide. The silicon carbide might be better expressed as SIC fibers, um, so that is not to be confused with californium. Sorry, I, I don't see the question. Do, do you see the Q&A pod? Yeah. Um, there's, when you, when you roll over the icon, there's a presenter view. And if you click on that, you can scroll down through the questions. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, okay. The silicon carbide fibers might be better expressed as silicon carbide fibers in all cases as CS is element symbol for California. Okay, so, uh, the, the, yeah, the, the, the CF don't mean California, but means uh, uh, Carbide uh, fibers. Okay. It's so hopefully that's clear. just clear in the context. See. Yes. Another question uh, on the uh, so redundant decay heat removal systems are needed. Uh, yes, the answer is 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 is, is yes. Uh, of course, the uh, safety architecture of of, of all of rea all reactors. Uh, needs, uh, as I mentioned, uh, redundancy, uh, needs uh, uh, doubling the, the system. It is, re uh, it is true for, for the decay heat removal system. It is true for the control roads. 
And uh, so that's why uh, we need uh, three, uh, for in the case of, of Allegro, we need three uh, decay heat removal uh, loops uh, with each one of the three uh, able to remove 100% of the decay heat uh, at uh, some uh, hours after the beginning of the, of the, of the transient. Um, another question is on what about the use of CO2 or uh, nitrogen for cooling instead of helium? Yes, uh, um, uh, of course, uh, CO2 was co considered in some past projects. Uh, the advantage of helium is that it's the low, higher temperatures and uh, uh, the disadvantage is that the uh, leakage of, of helium is, uh, is, is uh, more difficult to, 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 to manage. But, but finally, the, most of the reactors, most of the projects were uh, based on the, on the, on the choice of, of, of helium. Uh, how much operating testing experience is there with sitting on about uh, cloudy? Yeah, um, the the uh, projects uh, that consider this uh, silicon carbide and silicon carbide fiber cladding uh, rely on the on the development and qualification, but there is no no uh, feedback from from this. Uh, uh, some uh, experience uh, is uh, uh, already available uh, through the projects like EM Square, and uh, a, a, a program uh, is being uh, built for the for the irradiation of, of mm -hmm. such components and such comp uh, in in, uh, in reactors, not not only in gas cooled fast reactors, but also in uh, in other to to ha to get more information about such uh, uh, cladings. Um, I have a question. Uh, are the GCFR inherent safe? What about safety passive systems? Well, um, the um, uh, uh, safety pass passive systems means relying on on for the typically for for the, the question of decay heat removal. Uh, we must rely on natural convection. So the, 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 the decay heat removal systems are uh, designed to operate in, in natural convection. Uh, and uh, for the control of reactivity, uh, the, 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 the control rods uh, should uh, have additional passive systems that rely on uh, passive uh, features like uh, a Curie point or, or, or other uh, physical properties for, of materials to, to shut down the reactor in, in a safe way. Of course, this, this is being considered uh, from the beginning of, 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 the, of the design. Uh, I have a question of Dominic Napolitano. What is the time frame and cost to build Allegro? Well, for Allegro, we are in the phase of, of uh, prepared, what is called the preparatory phase. That means the, the, we are looking at the feasibility of, of, the, of, the react, of the reactor with different options. We are looking at different uh, nominal powers, different designs for the decay heat removal systems, and even for the, for, for the fuel, as I mentioned, for the startup fuel. So uh, we are in, in this phase until the middle of the 20s, 2025. 20, uh, we don't have a, a today a, a clear uh, view of the cost of, of, of the reactor because too many options, design options, are, are still open. Um, I don't know. We have other questions not addressed. Uh, yeah, uh, well, I have a question on uh, silicon carbide fiber cladding last for high burn up. Um, the, 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 the burn up, the reference burn up uh, is 
uh, around 5% uh, uh, FEMA. Um, this is uh, relative low related to uh, the experience gained on uh, stainless steel uh, for the um, sodium cooled fast reactors. Of course, the materials are different, and, and we don't have experience of uh, such 5% uh, uh, burn up uh, for, for silicon carbide fast. The, the, the DPA um, uh, target uh, is uh, roughly around 60 uh, DPA for, for, for such clubbing. What is the power density of these reactors at end of life when shut down? Important for the K-heat system, especially since helium does not have high heat, heat capacity. Um, at the end of life when shut down, well, the, 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 in fact, the, 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 when I mentioned the uh, power density, uh, 100 uh, uh, megawatt per, per cubic meter, even if we are looking at, at, at different values, lower values uh, in, the, in the range of uh, 100 to, to 50, uh, I am speaking about nominal conditions. So uh, in the question, uh, you uh, are asking about the, uh, the when the reactor is shut down, that means at the end of life and end of cycle, let's say, for a, for a core, um, the uh, decay heat is, uh, is not, not so much affected by, it means it's a, it's a proportional to the, the, the power density or at, at a nominal condition. So it's, it's not a specific issue. Uh, you know, this power uh, decay heat is 7% uh, a very, uh, uh, and, 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 and at the beginning of the transient after the shutdown, uh, and then uh, it decreases very fast uh, till some some percent, two, three, one percent. Um, uh, to uh, I have a question uh, about the to to what degree does the presence of carbon and the low atomic Mass coolant degrade the neutron energy spectrum. Yes, uh, in fact, the, um, the 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 of course uh, the, the 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 gas cooled fast reactor uh, have uh, a it's, it's a compromise in between the, um, the 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 weight of of the of the coolant uh, CO2 or, or helium, and the absorption uh, uh, of of neutrons for for, for such uh, coolants, but there is no no degradation of the new of the energy spectrum. That means the uh, is still a fast reactor. You know, even if the, the spectrum is uh, is even uh, higher than than the, than the sodium uh, fast reactor. Due to the fact that the, the density of, of such coolants is so so low that uh, the absorption and the um, the, uh, the the, the uh, slowdown of, of neutrons are not so uh, not so uh, important. Um, I have another question. Are there any issues related to the production and supply of the exotic materials of the reactor component materials? Uh, well, for the moment, we don't have identified a such uh, issue on the, the production and supply of the, of, 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 of the materials that are considered for the, for the uh, such reactors, uh, I, I forgot to mention that, uh, of course, the um, the materials uh, to be used in GFRs uh, have uh, several uh, uh, common uh, points with the materials that being used for the uh, HDRs. So um, the, the experience gained from the programs related to HDR are applicable uh, partially at least 
for the for the GFR. So there is no identification of materials that they, uh, uh, that with uh, uh, such exotic materials. Let's say. Um, um, how will refueling be accomplished in a pressurized environment? Uh, or will the reactor operate for 20, 30 years and then be shut down? Um, no, uh, all, all these uh, projects uh, consider, of course, uh, refueling. And uh, the, the refueling uh, system, the refueling machine, uh, should be connected to the primary vessel uh, to uh, be able to change the, the fuel assemblies under under pressure conditions. Um, so even if, for, for example, in the case of uh, EM uh, square, the the fuel cycle is uh, targeted is uh, around uh, 20 years. That means that, that doesn't mean that the, the life uh, extension of the of the, the life of the reactor is 20 years. It's just the the fuel. That means that it can be reloaded uh, with a, with another core. Uh, a question about the vented fuel: uh, How will the gaseous fission products be removed? Yes, this is. Um, it's a system that is uh, coupled to the uh, online to the to the to the fuel assemblies to collect the fission products and to uh, remove it from the, from 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 the pins. That is uh, a system that is, of course, uh, have the advantage that uh, keep the pressure inside the inside the pin uh, at uh, acceptable values. For a long period of operating of the of the fuel, but uh, it complicates the the operation because uh, there are additional systems that are uh, uh, added to the to the primary vessel. Um, how often will be will the reactor need to be refueled, and how will that be done in a pressurized environment? Well, in the case of 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 Allegro, uh, we are looking at a fuel cycle of uh, 660 full power equivalent days. That means uh, something in between two or four years without refueling. And uh, as uh, we already mentioned, that means that we need a fuel uh, refueling machine uh, connected to the primary vessel and under under pressure. Um, uh, let's see see if we have another. Uh, yeah, how, how long? Will the core have to be cooled before the entire core be removed after 20 years? Um, well, this um, is this. Uh, how long will the core have to be cooled? Yeah, uh, the 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 operation of, of of refueling is like in other type of reactors. Of course, is we is in a, the op the refueling operation is a question of days. That uh, means that after 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 the shutdown, the the design of the refueling machine uh, must be done in in sort that the uh, the case <coughs> of each uh, individual fuel assembly uh, are compatible with, with the design uh, of the refueling machine with their own uh, cooling system to to allow such uh, such uh, uh, refueling in, in in a reasonable time. That means uh, some some days. Um, I don't know if we have other questions. I don't see a, a additional questions. I think I tried to show all the questions. Yep. I, for now, you've worked through the list of questions. If you have additional questions um, for Alfredo, please do type them in now. We'll just um, maybe hang on for a half a second and see if other questions come in. Again, okay. thank you for uh, putting together this presentation and sharing your expertise with us. Um, I know that it's 
that it uh, is a little bit challenging given the time differences uh, between here and France. Um, as always, I want to make sure I thank Amanda for running the, the webinar scenes behind the scenes. Um, she's the one who helps keeping the audio going and addressing people's questions, and I appreciate your help. It's always nice to have a second set of hands running these. Um, and Patricia, of course, uh, thank you for your leadership in putting together all of these presentations. Um, You're welcome, Bertha. Pleasure. Anyway, uh, thank you for your uh, participation. And uh, if you have additional questions in the next days or you feel that I don't uh, fully answer uh, uh, some of the questions, please uh, uh, send me an email. You have my email in the first page of the presentations. I will be happy to, to answer you. Thank you so much, Alfredo. Really appreciate your help um, in conducting this uh, this webinar. Thanks again. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye, Alfredo. Bye, Berta. Bye, Bye, -bye. Amanda. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.